Recently, I've been really focused on screening for sexually transmitted infections as well as cervical cancer. And one of the areas that I've been interested in is looking at enabling women to collect their own cervical vaginal specimens for a whole range of uh, screening options. And part of the driving force behind this is um, that to be screened historically for cervical cancer or for chlamydia or for gonorrhea has involved a pelvic examination in which a woman has to undress from the waist down and get onto a, an examination table. It can be somewhat invasive and somewhat unpleasant. A lot of women don't like it. And so it may be acting as a barrier to getting some screening services. So many women um, who need to be screened might not want to be because they don't like the thought of the pelvic exam. One of the areas of research that I've looked at is using, for example, self-collected vaginal swabs for chlamydia and for gonorrhea, and they work perfectly well. Um, and in many settings, they are becoming the standard of care for STI screening, um, so that's a good thing. And then the other sort of area that is in transition is for cervical cancer screening, which historically has been done with a pap smear, which has to be collected by a doctor, a cervical specimen, where they scrape the cervix after inserting a device known as a speculum. But as the field is moving, so we discovered that human papillomavirus, which is a sexually transmitted infection, causes cervical cancer. And what that has meant is that there are now new tests that we can do that test for the presence of HPV um, in older women, women over 30. And that sort of opens the way to potentially using self-collected specimens um, for cervical cancer screening as well, because these tests only need a few cells because it's based on the DNA, the presence of DNA of the HPV virus. So we are looking at whether for women who don't historically get screened, whether this might improve overall coverage of cervical cancer screening.